<laughs> this is Nair. And this is Farce. And we are Perspeculative, of course. And we are here to talk to you today about a new segment that we're doing called the Hyperbolic Hype uh, Chamber. The Hyperbolic Hype Chamber. <laughs> yes. That. <laughs> One that Nair was very proud of. A name she's very proud of. Oh, I'm not that proud. I'm not that proud. <laughs> but no. And it's all about, as you might guess, shows that are overhyped. That just don't live up to the hype. And the one we're talking about today is Toradora. We've already talked about Taiga, so you all have an idea of how we feel about this. Yeah. Uh, again, trying to burn down any possible fandom right out of the gate, as we do. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It is still a good show, don't get us wrong. But the show started with so much potential. It was going in a unique direction that could have gone so many places. I mean, it started out as a nine. The first half was like a nine, and it just I don't want to say bombed, but it dropped yeah. hard. Like okay. It definitely falls off in the second half. Very much so. And I mean, as far as potential goes, we really liked the idea of the different relationships not being typical. So not just, oh, the guy and the girl hate each other, but now they're together and it just works out somehow. Even though their relationship, Tyga's obviously, is very unhealthy. And I don't particularly like it. I'm not fond of it. But in the beginning, it didn't have to go that way. It had a chance to go a lot of different ways. Like, for example, Ryuji could have gotten with Minari and Taiga would have had to learn to deal with that. To have two people that she cares about and learn to not be jealous and to kind of pull back how she is for their sake because she does care about them. Some of the only people she does care about and see both of them work together to take care of her, which they were doing in the beginning. Or to take it to LB... Oh, yeah. LGBTQ is the word. There you go. Plus. Way. You could have had Minari admit that she fell in love with Taiga because it seemed to try to go that way, too. And I don't know if the author was just scared to actually commit to doing any of those things, but wanted to kind of tease us that, oh, maybe that could happen. But with it not happening and it going the typical route, all of that potential was just shot. Yeah, it creates a, an interesting... In fact, we, we had been talking about that for a while, how the show could have gone in a few different directions. Generally, I'm actually not a huge drama fan. <laughs> I generally prefer life when things are simple, or even when they go well for the characters. But in this show's case, because of the things that had built up and the things that had mentioned, both in passing as well as actively... It created this sort of weird effect that the show kind of just streamlined into almost stereotypical anime romance towards the end. Mm -hmm. And again, I understand Taiga is one of those fan favorite characters, yeah. one of those tsundere's who are super popular. But, and I know that that, again, we're painting a target by saying this. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's a tiny target. <laughs> yeah. And I know, again, I'm definitely reaching here considering there's the whole popular trend of the short and angry girl being... Angry because small. Yeah, angry because small girl. <laughs> I know that that's like becoming very, very popular on the internet again. I know that comes and goes in phases. And I mean, like what you like. It's just, she crosses the line from being angry because small to like violent because small. And I feel like there's a line. <laughs> yeah, and never really gets out of that place. And definitely not enough. She never gets to an appreciative place. She never gets to a non-jealous place. She never gets to a place of trying to actually be there for people the way that they try to be there for her despite how she is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it feels like there's a more interesting angle that could have been approached here. Again, both through Ryuji and through Taiga. And we might make a separate video on that as far as different routes the story could have taken, different growth potentials we could have seen in it. Different ways the story could have been brought. And we've had a long discussion between each other about it, but it's just, yeah. Honestly, for both of us, it started off great and just so good, and just drops off. Not all the way down, but like it definitely lost a lot of points with how so much how the show almost fights itself to get back to a stereotypical place towards the end. It's almost as if the writer was writing the, I assume, manga, and 
the editors said, you know what, you should have it like this, or expected them to have the typical thing and kind of shoehorn Taiga and Ryuji together because that's what's typical, and the creator caved and went with it, even though that's not where they were going to go. It almost feels like that because of how they set it up and then how their balloon just kind of popped and just... You know, you know, you know? what it looks like to me? It, it looks like... I made a comment about how it feels like it, it was almost forced to go towards the stereotypical. And I actually stand by that because it literally starts off in a way where it feels like it's fighting against all those stereotypes. And then every force in the show seems to be rewriting itself towards the end. Exactly. That's to make what I'm it saying. end in such a stereotypical like way. Like, I need to please the editors or I'm not going to get published. You know what and, I mean? Or something. And, and it's weird because it feels so much less healthy towards the end. Like Very it, much it, so. It, their friendship and the friendship of all the characters in the show feels very natural. Like, it's awkward and it's fighty, but that's, when you're in your later years of high school, you know, that's how friendships and relationships are. They're very fighty. And, I mean, again, this could just be coming from an American Western perspective, but they seem more healthy at the start and almost get forced into this weird, unhealthy situation at the end, which feels mm-hmm. like the opposite of how a romantic buildup is supposed to go. But it feels like a series of contrivances sort of pull them together at the end into this weird, unhealthy relationship. I would have even been happy if they'd all stayed friends, which I don't think that Taiga was a good enough friend to stay friends with, as far as Ryuji goes. Minari's a different story. But with Ryuji, I I don't know what he saw in her except for his mother, i.e. a woman who cannot take care of herself and lays around in bed and won't cook for herself and won't clean. I mean, beyond that, I don't get it. I mean, he could have seen the potential and, like, the pain, but to then date her slash get engaged to her... It, it's too far, and I would have really liked to have seen Taiga to have to face those feelings with those she claims to care about and change and grow, and she just does so little of that, and I don't mean just in height. <laughs> well, so, sometimes the growth spurts hit late, but... <laughs> really? Really? Uh, but anyway, okay, I think we've burned enough of our fan base now, um, unless there's Honestly, anything else to add. Well, I want to say the best part of that show, after it lost its potential, was the... <laughs> <laughs> when they're introducing her as the tiny tiger and like... Yeah, you know, that is the cutest, best part to me. And the beginning of it. But the beginning is then hurt with the second half. Yeah. It'd that's... almost be better if you had the beginning and a cliffhanger so you could believe what you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, I, and trust me, I hate cliffhanger endings, but I wholeheartedly agree with you because it would have... Maybe it's just how it's written, but I feel like the show could have made their relationship feel more natural in developing. I mean, they have some sweet, tender moments together, and I wholeheartedly agree that there are sweet moments, but they're not strong enough and not sen- sapient enough for me to like look at it and say, you know, this is a healthy, functional thing. In fact, mm-hmm. the show kind of goes out of its way to tell us it's not healthy. Very much not. Especially right at the end, the way they're being, the way they're... They, rushing things. Yeah, like rushing things, like how their relationship was already codependent. But that can be okay under certain circumstances. It's just weird the route they went with it. Mm-hmm. Literally, the show for me went from a nine to a five. And we watched the whole show. We did because it had such great potential at the beginning that we really wanted to finish it. And it disappointed. I'm sorry. I know you guys love it and everything, but it disappointed. Yeah. Agreed. All right, well, let's <laughs> there get... goes our fan base. <laughs> Goodbye now. <laughs> uh, please don't leave. <laughs>